We're answering the question, can women be ministers? You need to watch the video just before this one where I go through the prophetic promises that God is going to make a change under the new covenant. That God's going to pour out a spirit, not just on male priests, but he's going to pour out a spirit on all flesh that both sons and what? Daughters will prophesy. We see that Paul wrote in Galatians 3, there's no difference between male or female, for we're all one in Christ Jesus. We're seeing that under the new and better covenant, God was going to do a new thing. Jeremiah 31 verse 22 speaks of this new covenant. It says this, God will create a new thing on earth. A woman will surround a man. One translation says, will encompass a man. What is that saying? Is unlike the old covenant where the men were in charge, under the new covenant, I'm going to put women in charge at times as well. And in fact, in that same chapter, Jeremiah says, and then God will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So the idea of new, the new covenant includes women protecting men now, women leading men. So God is saying a new covenant is going to bring forth a new system of things. And some of you you call yourself Christian, but yet you keep resisting women in ministry. You know what you keep, guys keep doing? You, you give me the same scriptures over and over again. You give me 1 Corinthians 14, 34, and 35, and 1 Timothy 2. It seems like that's all you have. Instead of, instead of looking at the entire word of God and God's promises that he's going to touch all flesh, women are going to preach, women will lead, yet you want to ignore all of that, and you just want to go by two verses in your Bible. And that seems to nullify everything else. Well, I'm going to take the 1 Corinthians 14, 34 and 35 passage, because I'm going to show you what Paul means by this. And it's going to shock some of you. Now, here's the passage. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34 and 35. Women should remain silent in the churches. They're not allowed to speak, but must be in submission as the law says. If they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home. For it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. There it is. That's the passage. Yes, there it is. It's right there. But even you who, who don't believe in women ministries, ministers, you still don't abide by that. Because do women speak in your church? Do they give announcements? Do they sing? Do they read scriptures at a Bible study? Do they ask questions? Oh, wait a minute. You mean women are talking? According to this passage, it's not saying women can't be pastors. It says women can't even talk. Oh, but you're not paying attention to that, are you? You just want to go ahead and, and take what you want out of that passage and ignore everything else. What was Paul saying? Paul's actually given a quotation from a letter that the Corinthian church had sent him. You see, in 1 Corinthians 7, 1, Paul says, Now concerning the matters you wrote to me about. So Paul is taking the letter that the Corinthian church wrote, and he's answering their questions. So what did Paul just finish preaching? He says in verse 31, For you can all prophesy in turn. How many? All. A double L. That means everyone, including women. So by saying everyone can prophesy, he's saying, now you guys have come up with some sort of law teaching that women can't talk. Now, I know Paul's talking not about himself, but about this letter, because notice the next verse right after this controversial statement, women can't be allowed to speak. It's disgraceful. Notice in the King James Version, verse 36, what? That's the first words, what? Came the word of God out of you or came unto you only? He, he's mocking their statement. What? He would not be mocking his own statement. He's mocking their statement. So Paul is actually correcting their view. We know he's not talking about himself because he says that this teaching is based on what the law says. Paul would never quote the Mosaic law as a legalistic matter for the, uh, uh, the church. He wrote in Romans chapter 10, Christ is the end of the law. We're not under law, but under grace. So why would he be appealing to the law of Moses to keep women silent? And besides that, there's nothing in the law of Moses that specifically says women should remain silent. So Paul's not giving his quotation. He's giving the quotation of that letter they wrote to him about. So Paul says, 
everyone may prophesy. And just to, so that you know that women are included in the all, in chapter 11, the few, few chapters before that statement, he mentions in verse 5 that women can pray and prophesy with their head covered. So back in those days, the Corinthians had a culture, a custom where women had to wear coverings on their head. And he says, well, if that's your custom, go ahead so the women can pray and prophesy. That means they are making noise. They are not cited in the church because they're praying in the church. Is praying making noise? Yes. Is prophesying making noise? Yes. So Paul is saying, go ahead and do that if that's your custom, but the other churches don't have such customs. But then in chapter, uh, verse 11 of chapter 11, he says, nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, nor is the man independent of woman. For as woman came from man, so also man is born of woman, for everything comes from God. You know what Paul is saying? I want you to know in the Lord, though, there's no such custom. In the Lord, there is no uh, difference between male and female. Didn't Paul write, there's no difference between male and female? Didn't God say he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh, including women, daughters who are going to prophesy? Friend, for you who are championing chapter 14, verses 34 and 35, you know what you're championing? You're championing the Judaizers who are trying to silence the women. You're not championing the Pauline revelation, just the opposite. So that's what 1 Corinthians chapter 14 is talking about. It's the letter that the Corinthian church wrote to try to stop what Paul was saying. So in the end, Paul says, let everyone acknowledge that what I am writing, watch this, what I am writing is the Lord's command. In other words, you wrote to me what you thought the law says, but I'm telling you, it's time for you to acknowledge that what I write is the Lord's command, not what you write. So that's the meaning of 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34 and 35.